right. I gotta be in the picture for the copyright. The engineer term out, and it'll be on the ballot. The engineer. When they allowed nicknames, I submitted it, and they said, "How can you prove the world knows you as the engineer?" And I said, "Check the Guinness Book of World Records." Now I'm here to complain about Canada's national debt. This is it. Notice it started to grow in 1974, and since then it's grown hundreds of billions. And we paid at least a trillion in debt service over the last 40-some years since 1974. Now take a look at the Ontario debt. Same thing, 1974. Then the Ontario debt started to grow out of control. Oh, take a look at the Quebec debt, 1974. Same thing, started to grow again. Now, this is not just Canada. Take a look at France's debt, 1974. What happened? In 1974, well, I'm not going to tell you. If you want to know, you go to my website, smartestmanonearth.ca. See the video there about what happened in 1974, because I don't have the time. But I will say that I'm the closest education to Mr. Spock on this planet. Systems engineering and mathematics of gambling. And who used to figure out the odds on Star Trek? So I'm trying to tell you that you've been ripped off about 70 grand a piece. About two trillion dollars we've been taxed for debt service since 1974. And if they hadn't done that, we'd all have 70 grand in our bank accounts instead of the bankers' bank accounts. You want to know how they did it? Go to smartestmanonearth.ca. Number two, got to talk about climate change. You all remember the hockey stick graph, right? The famous hockey stick graph, and they're going, oh, look, it's terrible. It's going to go all the way up to here. Then in 1998, it stopped. They call it a pause, but they were caught fudging the data, and, and they used a trick to hide the decline. So it was a decline, not a pause. They were hiding. But the big lie is this. The actual graph had the medieval warming period way hotter than today. And that's when Greenland was green, and you grow stuff there, and they had grapes in Britain when it was way warmer than now without all this CO2. So the fact that CO2 is spiking and the temperature has cut off is trying to tell you you've been lied to. So you've got a whole bunch of politicians in all the major parties still fooled by the trick to hide the decline including the dropout engineering student Justin Trudeau, who would have never graduated if he couldn't master thermometers. So, we got lied to by the people who fudged the data. If you go check medieval war period, you will find the truth. And yet, you bought this, and you're now paying carbon taxes to prevent yourself from something that isn't causing warming? Yeah, what a bunch of dummies. And that's why I'm the smartest man on earth, .ca, and I didn't fall for it when the truth came out. I did before the truth came out, but once they lied, I knew it was over. So, I just had to crash that myth with so much money being wasted and remind you about your 70 Gs that can get you back. Well, those of you who remember John the Engineer Turnell ran for mayor in the 80s and 90s, talking about money before,
When you count up with the provinces and the municipalities and the corporations' charges and our personal interests, we probably paid 70 grand worth of debt service since 1974. Now, what happened that took 70 grand out of each and every one of your bank accounts? That if this hadn't happened in 1974, all that interest, those two trillions in interest that we suffered in taxation over the last 40 years, what happened in 1974 to cause that? Well, I've got some videos on my site, which I'm the first person to take out. Smartest man on earth.ca. No one else dared. Thank you. Out. I'm not telling you. Well, I 
think like all of you, I'm very disturbed by what's happened with the Phoenix, <laughs> Phoenix pay system. Um, you know, I mean, this is clearly a debacle of an enormous magnitude and something that needs to be addressed with great urgency. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to require significant investments because at this point, it's just simply unacceptable that we allow our hardworking public servants to go on without adequate pay. What I've proposed is that we do everything that we can to bring compensation back into the departments until such time as the pay center issue can be resolved because only within a department do human resources professionals have the capacity to really and immediately address the concerns that are um, being generated by Phoenix. This is not going to be cheap. We're going to have to go. Many of the compensation advisors are no longer embedded in their departments. Some are. For those who aren't, we're going to have to go and find where they are, second them back into their departments, hire experts from other departments to come back in at the local level so that we can ensure that until the glitches in the software are resolved, people are getting their bi-weekly paycheck that they're entitled to and are not bearing the enormous burden of anxiety um, for their families. And I mean, I have students, I teach at the University of Ottawa, I have students who haven't been paid since the summer. They're unable to pay their tuition. Uh, this would not be acceptable in the private sector and we should not accept it here either. Green 
ran this cream. It ain't cream now. Don't tell me this is the warmest period ever. Dream on. <laughs> Global warming 
And if they didn't believe in global warming, they could prove it. Now suddenly, they changed it to climate change. So that either way, they win. Well, guess what? It still comes out pretty stupid. Because who in their right mind is going to try and stop climate from changing? It always changes. It always has. And only a moron will try and, try and stop it. You live with it. So, here's the point though. In 09, they, hit a, they used a trick to hide the decline. Now, they didn't want to admit it was a decline. It makes it look bad because CO2 is still spiking. So they said, we're going to call it a pause in the rise. How many people have heard them talk about the global warming pause? Right? It wasn't a pause they hit. They hit a decline. And it's still lower than 1998. And guess what? It's lower than the dirty 30s in 1934. They kept adjusting the data. You're looking at fudged data. Look for the unadjusted data. Well, what if we don't prepare and global warming happens? Catastrophe. Well, what if we don't prepare for a Martian invasion and a catastrophe? Well, guess what? I bet you a hundred bucks that ain't going to happen this year. That's how you put those guys down. I offer these global warming betters, say, hey, I bet you next year's colder, and they all check it out. So forget what they're talking about. Flash the cash, and when they back down, say bye-bye trash. 17's colder than 16, so is 18. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, so well, I already explained how a last time bank allows employment to be traded around. Local employment trading software generates new employment in the group. Let's. It's working around the world for 33 years. So much so that in most countries, if you belong to an official Let's Time Bank, your earnings are not taxed unless you're in the business. In the United States, when the IRS wanted to charge people who were, you know, you cut my hair, I'll mow your lawn, or give you cake, or whatever, the provinces, the states argued, look, if this makes people help each other, and they're not going to bug us to do it for them, we don't want to cut in Jackson. So the IRS made belonging to a time bank trades non-taxable. And it's the same thing in many commonwealth countries. So, no one expects you to do it yourselves. You can always wait for their strategy, their national strategy to help you. But, when you get hungry enough, just remember, to do it yourself, get organized yourself, local employment trading software, that they used to have one in Toronto, they used to have one in Ottawa, they're too small, the economy got better, when it Thank gets you. bad, you'll know what to do. Thank you. The robots are coming, and they're going to take your jobs, because they can do it better. And Major Douglas, the founder of Social Credit, had a great idea. He said, we should get a share of the robot's paycheck, then we won't feel so bad if they take our jobs. Now, he said, how do you do that? He said, well, in the world of the future, instead of giving people a wage for work, they should be getting a dividend for a share in such a rich culture that can have robots produce shoes if you get your share. Thank you.
for some private entity, they do a lousy job. And when you had kings who printed their own chips, like King Henry the First, they weren't debtors. Well, they had nice, happy kingdoms. Go read about it. King Henry the First's tallies, same as the Argentinian bond books. It's been done before. So anyway, fix the money, and that problem won't occur. The pension funds will just run on themselves, and the government won't have to touch them. And they won't want to, because King Henry had enough money. Didn't need to steal people's money. He could print up new tallies anytime he wanted to put people to work. Just like Argentina printed up bonds. To put people to work. We could too. Thank you. Well, I know I'm talking to posterity and the cameras when I say they won't need pensions. When everybody has their own interest free bank account at the Bank of Canada, because what is a pension but a savings device? where you get a few tax breaks if you save something. So it's just a little bit of saving on your paychecks, right? It's not a pension yet, but if you had an interest-free account at the Bank of Canada with access to what you need and no drain of interest every month, you'd have plenty left over. You wouldn't even need a pension. Thank you. Ms. Fortune? Well, did you know about the big case in Gatineau two weeks ago that took 1,500 seconds in front of a jury trial? I did that. They want to bust small people. I showed them how to defend themselves. Now, back in 2003, I went up Parliament Hill with 3.3 kilos of marijuana for Prime Minister Trudeau. And I got busted. Now, I didn't make the citizen of the one the son. The candidate for mayor is risking a life sentence and talk on Parliament Hill. But I was angry because they were bringing back the new decriminalization law. And I was saying the law is dead from two years earlier. I don't want you recriminalizing it. So I wanted to freak him out. I went on Parliament Hill. And sure enough, the headline over me being arrested was Ottawa holds back marijuana bill. And then two weeks later, Parliament was prorogged. And we never had a new charges in 2003. So that's my greatest feat so far. But they gummed it up in exactly the same way again. And I have a co-celeb going on in Montreal on June the 20th with a hundred will says of people complaining about their doctors not wanting to sign their forms and that means the regime's no good. And I'm tired of Justin Trudeau reneging like his father on the promise. Next year, next year, Thank next you. year. Well, I hope Thank you. Check me out. Thank you. Fact, the bookies have spoken. U.S. insurance companies say high drivers have less accidents. So it's trying to have a designated high driver law to keep the drugs and the streets off the roads. Protect the kids, they say. Protect the kids. Marijuana's never had them. And marijuana regrows new brain cells, which is why I'm so sharp and you're so dull. So, so anyway, you're going to need cannabis oil very soon because of the cancers you're going to get from sucking up Fukushima radiation for the last five years. And the supply is not ready for you. So when you need it, you're not going to get it. You're going to regret not having fought for the legalization harder. And this is life and death. This stuff can kill cancer, the oil, and you can't get any. And fresh juice, and you can't get any. And you probably never will, because they want to restrict it, because they want to protect the kids from extra brain cells. So, I don't. They want to give their kids Ritalin and Prozac. I want to give them the marijuana muffin. Not the one saving them.
John Turmel, uh, independent, Indy Honda. Thank you. Back in the 80s and 90s and 2000s, I ran in every election I could of my simple Johnny engineer. <laughs> and this is my 91st so far unsuccessful election going on. <laughs> and you have to wonder, why would I keep doing that? The national debt. This is the national debt, and I got a share of it. Gee, you too. Now you'll notice that up until a certain year, it was always around under 20 billion through most of our history. And suddenly it started to explode. 1974, what happened? Guess what? Ontario! This is Ontario's provincial debt. Almost nothing through most of our history, then suddenly, boom, starts to grow. 1974, what happened? Quebec, most of history, nothing. Suddenly it starts to grow. 1974, what happened? And if you think it's just Canada, here's France. And they had pretty well nothing until 1974. Well, what happened in 1974? Well, if you want to know, I'm not telling you. You gotta go to my website, <laughs> smartestmanonearth.ca, because I know and you don't. And I don't even have to be smartestmanonearth.ca to make that point. But this graph also shows how much interest we've paid us old enough to be since 1974. And that means that if they hadn't done whatever it is they did in 1974, they wouldn't have to tax us $70,000 each, those of us who've been part of society since 1974, right? The gray hairs here? So, your debt service, you were taxed 70 grand over your lifetime that could be in your bank account, but instead is in some banker's account because something happened in 1974. And to find out what happened, you've got to go to smartestmanonearth.ca. <laughs> <laughs> Et pourquoi est-ce qu'il n'y a pas assez d'investissement pour le marché et le chemin Montréal? Intérêt. Quand on dépasse 30, 40 millions par année sur l'intérêt en premier, il y a manque. Et c'est pour ça qu'il n'y en a pas assez. Il faut toujours payer les bars qui est leur intérêt en premier à cause de 1974, cette maudite année-là. Donc, I'll pay my tax for army and police to handle strife. I'll pay my tax for doctors, nurses who protect my life. I'll pay my tax for all engaged repairing road and sewer, the Marché and Montreal Road. I'll even pay my tax for social servants helping out the poor. I'll even pay my tax for bureaucrats with no regret. I only object to paying tax for interest on debt. Get it? If I get something for my tax money, no problem. But money's time is not human useful time. And if you want to give me human useful time, great. But trying to get me to pay for money's time, not great. So that's basically it. If you're not wasting the money on interest, paying only for human time, well, you're not going to run short. And you can have nicer roads and nicer markets. If built, Trans Canada's Energy East Pipeline would be the largest pipeline project in North America. The proposed project would transport over one million barrels of oil and tar sands bitumen every day through Ottawa and many of the waterways the city depends on for its drinking water. Independent engineering consulting firm Savaria has assessed that if Energy East ruptured on either the Rideau or Mississippi rivers, anywhere from 2 to 23 million liters or more of oil would be spilled and would enter our drinking water, threatening our health and safety. Because of this, if elected, would you oppose the Energy East pipeline? Yes, and until the evidence comes out, I have to agree. <laughs> and John, you're up first. <laughs> All right, I gotta point out how smart Argentinians are and how stupid we are. Don't get mad. In the 80s, when Argentina was broke and they were gonna lay everybody off, the 
union said, sorry, no layoffs. You want to bring your bond to New York to get bills, pay us tax on it with interest? We'll take $1 peso bonds, as long as we can use them for hydro, taxes, medical, and licenses. So, six Argentinian provinces started printing up provincial bonds. See, lady, I'm going to get to it. That's the punchline, but you're not going to get it, will you? If you, if you miss the premise, you miss the punchline. You think I don't have a punchline? Anyway, Argentinian Union said no layoffs, we'll take bond bucks, and there were no layoffs, and they went to full employment, and then they paid off all their foreign national debt, and they had a lot of money. So, King Edward, yes. if Argentinians could print up enough bonds to put everybody to work, why couldn't we have three, four shifts of guys working on the equipment and ha instead of having guys go home and leaving the equipment idle? Right now, the only excuse you got for one shift instead of five is not enough money, right? <coughs> and yet the Argentinians had these bond bucks that they could use for hydro, Ontario Hydro, your taxes, your medical, your licenses. Who wouldn't take a piece of paper that pays all that? And that's how they could have five shifts working on the roads, and you guys are proud to get out one, maybe. How much money would it take for you to work at 3 a.m. in the cold? Lady, if you offer me a bonus, a lot of guys will do it. Besides, some of us are real men. I worked with Trish for 15 years and I taught at the college and carpentry program. Don't talk to me about real men. <laughs> 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 Sounds like you've never met any. Okay. <laughs> Clean energy, good. Nuclear energy, bad. Now, I believed, like everybody else, that we were burning coal and it was heating up the planet dangerously. Up until 2009, when Climate Gate came out. And I heard that the guys who produced the hockey stick graph had used a trick to hide the decline after 1998. Now, people say, hey, scientists use tricks all the time. It's a way to be elegant. I'm going to do it. I'm not worried about trick. I'm worried about hide. And these guys had to hide something from us. They hid the decline. Now they renamed it a pause. Did you hear about the pause a little while ago? It's the pause going on now. They hid the decline, but they renamed it a pause. So they have a real problem now in that for the last 18 years, there's been no rise in temperature and CO2 is still spiking. And they're looking stupid. But they looked stupid before that, because in the Middle Ages, they had Greenland when Greenland was green. What's it look like now? If you went to Greenland now, would you call this Greenland? But they did, a thousand years ago. And how can you believe them when they tell you that this is the hottest era, year in history, when you know about the medieval warm period, when they had grapes in England? and Greenland was green. So, yeah, I believe that these guys have fudged the books, they pulled off a scam, and they diverted resources away from us helping clean up Fukushima, which is really gonna kill you. You get a piece of fallout in you, a lot more deadly than you even know once it's inside you. And we've been bathed in it since then. And we've been fighting stopping climate from changing. Can you imagine how stupid a generation who tried to stop climate from changing will look to posterity? That's us. They tricked us into fighting to try to stop our climate from changing. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we have unanimity. We all, all agree that the waters should be protected. Not one of us is in favor of not protecting the waters. So. Since we all agree, how come happiness isn't happening? <laughs> money! They got no money to pay for it. Every single one of them wants it to be better. They wish it for you. It should be. You deserve it. Doesn't mean they can deliver, but they do want it for you. And they're not lying. They're going to do their best to try, though they have no clue what to do. But they'll try. And they'll look at it seriously with a kind heart. But budgeting 
is spreading around the shortage. Government borrows the principal, spends it, taxes it out with interest. So, they're always having to pay the interest to the bankers first and spread around the shortage to everybody else. That's what budgeting is all about, forever, throughout history. Interest comes first, then you pass out what's missing to everybody out there to pass out the... Mortgage means death gamble. You pass out a little bit of the death, a little here, a little there. Hopefully not too much squawking happens during budgeting days, cutting life support tickets. So again, we all want safer, cleaner waters. Nobody is against safer, cleaner waters. So what's the difference between us? Since we all want the same and all don't want, want the same, who's going to come up with a way of paying for it? And that's all I've been talking about all night. <laughs> well, thinking outside the box, um, if they can become financially self-sufficient with access, say, to the Bank of Canada's credit facilities, they wouldn't need your help. Okay. They wouldn't be bound their backs screaming for help, begging for help, if they were self-sufficient, right? So, yeah, yeah, sure, you want to stand your back, we'll try and help you. But you want to stand up, I'd rather do that instead. So, with sufficient funding, no community would be needing our help. They should all be self-sufficient, and all be able to support themselves in their endeavors. So. Get rid of the loan sharking, everybody benefits is the short message. But my final point about this was that in the old days, the original natives had wampum. Wampum, which was an interest-free bead worth, I don't know, a, you know, an eagle feather or a horse or an hour's babysitting. You know, an, hour, an hour's uh, papoose babysitting. So anyway, in that way, they had their own interest-free credit system. And throughout most of history, barter was never the way they did it. You never had the right incidence of wants. I need one pig and I happen to have 50 chickens. But tabs worked. Here, I'll give you 10 chickens now and 40 chickens over the next year. And that's how most of the world worked on credits throughout history. And that is exactly how a time bank works again same process. So, Indians had wampum, which worked that way, which goes to show that good ideas arise in all cultures, especially that one. Well, I think I would have the most impact on the people who think that this is catastrophic. How can you not want to take precautions when such terrible things could happen if the Martians really do invade next year? Hey! The same way I can make fun of the guy who's saying the Martians might invade, we gotta protect. And the guys who say it ain't the sun, it's our CO2, we gotta protect, is simply say, bet you a hundred bucks next year's colder. And when they back down, who's most confident? I've been making people back down from a bet on next year being colder since 2009, okay? Everybody wants to shoot their mouth off about this is hot, hot, hot. And I just got to say, bet you next year it stops. And suddenly they don't want to bet no more. You cannot argue with these religious believers. They continue to be fooled by the trick to hide the decline because there's a mantra that says 97% scientists, 97% scientists. Hey, you got the 1% here, real scientists, saying... You forgot about medieval war period slows. So the slow politicians, they still tripped. The quickie, I ain't tripped. I found out they lied to me. That's enough. And I put the boots to them with the bet on the future. And you can do the same to every war mista out there. Just offer them a bet on next year and watch them turn tail and run away. They'll tell you it's the hottest years and it's going to get warmer, but they won't bet on it. I know I put them to the test. So yeah, get me into Parliament. I'll make fun of the slows who think that it's getting hotter. So you would have lost your bet. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. The great Canadian gambler is going to lose my bet. Google for me. All right. You know how PayPal works? Some of you, the younger ones.
PayPal. Imagine you could, like PayPal, log on to the Bank of Canada's computer, open an account, and instead of pledging your Visa card, you pledge a thousand hours of labor. That's a bank idea. Now you cut checks, Bank of Canada new chips, to pay all your interest-bearing debts, student loans, mortgages, credit cards below. You get one big number at the Sugar Daddy Bank, and after that, all your payments go against principal. That's a deal. So, use your Bank of Canada account to convert your interest-bearing debts to interest-free debts. So the guy who built your house gets paid, but the banker stops getting interest. The guy who made your shoes gets paid, but the guy who charged them interest doesn't. So basically, get everybody their interest-free bank account, and that allows everybody to become economically secure. And I don't have to help anybody anymore. It's a name of the game now to try and get positive. And most babies are going to come into the world and go negative, 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 whether daddy's a drunk or a gambler, a few operations. And then they're going to go positive over the lifetimes and hopefully crack zero and go positive even more. And then when they die, they open it up and they potlatch and they divvy out the positives. And if you died in the negatives with the retards and the slows and the sick, okay, you didn't try very hard or you were sick. Sit down. And we all chip in a couple of pennies each. So that's the world of the future where whether your daddy is rich or not has no effect on your access to life support with a Bank of Canada interest-free account online. Oh, Greece is talking about it, Switzerland's talking about it, Britain's talking about it, Russia's talking about online national banking. Are they going to do it first when I was proposing it 37 years ago here? I love being the iconoclast and shattering cherished myths. Like I shattered those people who say these are the hottest times ever. Gee, you forgot about the Middle Ages, duh. And it goes in one ear and out the other. Oh, Prime Minister is still going to be trying to. Prime Minister is still going to be trying to cool down. Really good. You're pumping your kids full of many combinations of safe vaccines without testing the combinations. 26 vaccines in the first year of a kid in the United States. Only 16 million combinations to test. But you know all about combinations. Okay, by the way, nice to see you all the slows and hands And the last one is, of course, marijuana. Nobody talked about marijuana tonight. And with the Fukushima cancers that are coming, you're going to need marijuana. And you're not going to have access to it in the time time. So, hey, hey, excuse me, sir. You want to stand up here and face the camera and tell us why you're interrupting this? Is this another organizer? Who is this guy over here? Want to interrupt me? You want to come and talk? It's enough, it's enough. I'm the last speaker and you can shut me down and shut me down, right? Sweetie, I've got this guy, I've got this guy, you want me to stay on point. Anyway, I think we'll leave it on that issue. This guy had the last word, this guy had the second last word, and you missed my last word.